Uh, welcome to one more day. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of the Chinese. Let's continue uh, looking into a new expression depicting a standard of Chinese ideal beauty. So uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about Mei Qing Mu Xiu. So I realized that in Chinese, because we have such expressions that actually um, taken like a two features, because Chinese expressions, set expressions came with four, mostly, right? Four characters. Because of four characters, you can only use one de descriptor on one feature on the face. And so the max you can describe in one expression are two features on your face. Yesterday, we talked about the teeth and the eyes, the pupils in particular. Now, today, we're going to talk about the eyebrows and the eyes. So basically, this narrow strip on your face. And Chinese use Mei Qing Mu Xiu to depict uh, somebody's eyebrows. Qing, again, clear looking, meaning it's well trimmed, it's not fuzzy edged. And the Mu Xiu, Xiu is, um, I, I translate it as pretty. So we're going to look into like exactly why it's pretty, uh, where it come, came from. Okay, that's the overall Mei Qing Mu Xiu. Okay, Mei. Now you can see Mei and Mu, they share this. And this is the starting point of Mu, that Chinese Mu or eyes. Chinese depict a human eye eyeball <laughs> using the edge of the, you know, the border lines of the eye. I guess ancient Chinese, they observe their own eyes kind of in a shape with uh, the outer eyes uh, came with this edge thing, right? And the inner eye is more rounded um, and also a little bit tilted upward, <laughs> kind of conforming to the typical, stereotypical Asian, East Asian people's slant eye look. But you can see it's not slant. Slant is like narrow, kind of like that, right? Actually, this is probably preferred or more common, commonly observed eye shape. Um, Chinese would, would use um, almond almond seed that shape is the preferred um, ideal eye shape so eventually this character got verticalized became this because it's easier to write you just draw box with two horizontal lines that's it nobody is going to make a mistake versus this it's really hard to write okay so that's a reason so now this is eyeball when we talk about eyebrow right of course we're going to have the eye there uh to to define the location of the feature appeared. Now we have this <laughs> kind of, okay, now I'll give you a, a sense it sit on top of the eye and <laughs> coming with hairs like that. Like this is a recurring sign to mean the bushes, the high bushes over there, very bushy eyebrow. eyebrow. Um, so overall, it's just a visual representation of how the eyebrow would look. This is the, the top part is how it, the look of the eyebrow and here the eye to depict the location of the eyebrow um, because to just by itself, it's hard to see exactly what that is because you can have multiple interpretations. But once you put an eye icon below it, you know, oh, that means it's the same close to the eye. So it's eyebrow, no confusion there. Okay, so now we get the nails clear. We have um, descriptors. Qing used to make um, dep depiction of the eyebrow. So as I said, it means well-trimmed, clear edged eyebrows. Uh, I'm not sure actually Asian people use tweezers or whatever to to make their eyebrows clear clearly clearly defined edges uh, but that's the preferred look um it came from water depicting the clear look of the water okay chinese express express clear water <clears throat> with the water sign of course this is the water symbol on the left and the color of water when it's clear water. So <clears throat> the water sign comes from 
um, the natural flow of water in nature, kind of water channel. You can observe it in rivers, streams, creeks, however the size of the water body, um, that um, the main stream <clears throat> is kind of continuous and then the edges are broken. That shows how water would naturally look in its natural habitat that uh, the mainstream is going to go faster and uh, the edges are going to be blocked or interrupted by um, the debris from the banks, <clears throat> right? Okay, because it's a depiction of the water look, so water sign plus the color if the water would be clear. Okay, what's the color if the water will be clear? In Chinese, it's a kind of a blue, greenish color. And Chinese actually use that color to describe both the mountain and the water. So that's basically the color of life. Therefore, Chinese expressing this qing as the color of life. So there's two horizontal lines plus a vertical line. That's the soil symbol. Now we have this kind of a bowl shape on top of that. That make it um, life simple. <laughs> the reason why is because this horizontal line means the ground level, the earth. And this, uh, this vertical line means some vertical line plus this actually. I, I'm doing the order in the sequence uh, of what it means. Okay, so this means life itself or plant itself growing. It has both the above ground and underground portion. And then the second horizontal line is a pointer pointer, kind of like what I'm doing, the arrow signs all over the place here. Um, that's the ancient Chinese that just use one straight line to intersect with the very tip of the supposedly the root of the plant to mean it's still rooted, it's still alive, it's still growing um, and on, under the ground and have the above ground portion. So that's Chinese definition of life. I have a whole month talking about life um, that this Shung, this character, Shung, uh, paired with all other different kinds of Chinese characters combined to create a new meanings. So I have a whole month, I forgot which month that talks about, dedicated to this life uh, icon, Shung. Okay, the bottom, this is the mining sign. So this is the opening of the mining sign. So it, it made into kind of squarish rectangular shape and then with this dot in the middle that means some minerals extra extravocated from um, the earth from underground so that's a chinese mining table a mining uh, symbol and mining the the minerals taken out from the earth uh, were i guess in in the past used as mineral uh, as pigments a lot of times so this coloring of, so that, that means color eventually, right? Because this pigment and color plus life together, color of life is that greenish, bluish color. You see in English, we have to, we have a distinction between blue and green. Chinese, Chinese merge them together to means all that spectrum of color. That simply is color of life, either using that to describe mountains or rivers or water. So when the water is not muddy, muddy water would appear brownish, right? When it's clear, you're going to see the water um, in a color of life because there are things living in the water that make the water body looks greenish, bluish. So this color of life paired with water, that means clear and muddied. So clearly defined eyebrow. Now, eyes were using xiu to de describe it. And the xiu came from two parts. The top means crop, means, um, you know, as an agrarian society, people spend a lot of time, attention, technology, all that focus on food security. So that's like thousands of years of working on food security. So this came to the forefront of Chinese consciousness. And when when we you know try to describe like in this case pretty Chinese will use the crop, ripening crop as 
the go-to <laughs> symbol for uh, pretty. Okay, so the crop, hmm, to describe crop, we have to do plant symbol. So as we see here, this trident, I call it the trident shape, right? This thing um, is the crop in general. And now with this, this bottom part, like going downward, that shows the, the root of the crop. I mean, together it actually is a tree symbol for Chinese. Now Chinese add this one slanted line to show the heavy pulling and the gravity of the ripe uh, seeds or the fruit, not fruit. I think the more like seeds, grains, okay, basically. So imagine rice, right? Uh, when it's ripe, it's full of the, the grains and then it's going to be heavy. It's going to drip like that. So this depicts the ripening crop. That's, you know, food. That's, you know, for Chinese, in Chinese eyes, after a whole year of working on that, whole year or maybe semi-year, there could be different, uh, like two or three times a year, seasonal crops, uh, but it's a lot of work going in there. So in the perception of Chinese eyes, that means beauty, right? <laughs> okay, the bottom here is like this looking thing, almost like an English R looking. It's Chinese human figure. <laughs> okay, I spend quite some time romanticizing this because in contemporary Chinese, human figure looks just like this, like a, a Eiffel Tower, because it simply means two legs standing being. There's nothing more to it. It's a just a structure depiction. But here, besides the two legs, it has a straighter side and a curvier side, almost like our left and right side, like two sides of us, one rational side, one impulsive or really one animalistic side, one like more divine side, like humans are this complex, um, conflicting component, uh, composite of conflict, conflicting elements together, right? So we're complex and that gives more sense of two legs standing being, but it's a complex. It got at least two parts that we can dissect um, in any dimension. And so this, became human figure, ancient description, human figure. And um, the human figure plus the crop, that actually, I mean, according to some scholars, that means uh, when it's harvesting, harvesting time, uh, as humans carrying the crop, we have the icon or the character for the, the describing the year. We're using harvesting image means somebody carrying the crop on their back. That's um, the, the marker of the end of the year. Uh, but in this case, there, there are some, some missing elements that there was not depicting this carrying on the back image. It's just the human figure plus the crop. So I guess, I guess this pretty concept then is made of, okay, we are describing humans with this riping crop image um, to, to mean, okay, a mature person, I guess, when a person is well-grown, fully developed, ready, I mean, looks delicious, right? It's edible. Um, then that's the, the ideal, like that's what would be considered a pretty person, um, right? So now Chinese use that to describe eyes and a little bit more wordy here. Um, pretty actually together, uh, this, this xiu character means the type of plants that's going to fruitation without blooming or flowering process. So that's like the edible parts of grains, the weeds, the barley, all that, they don't bloom. They just go become grains. At least the blooming part was not emphasized um, versus uh, more fruit-based um, apples, orange, they have this flowering stage, um, the pollinizing through flowering. And that Chinese has another character to describe that type of plant. But this uh, xiu was used to describe this 
particular of writing process without flowering. Okay, Mei Qing Mu Xiu. Now, let me give you an example. So when I'm searching Mei Qing Mu Xiu in Chinese media, um, this image, uh, he's an actor. So, I mean, most of the expressions are used on females, but Mei Qing Mu Xiu happen to be gender neutral. You can use it on both girls and guys. And here he is used as a good example of clearly defined brow, broad, <laughs> broad brushed almost um, eyebrows and um, the eye shape is preferred almond shape, double eyelids. So just looking at this por portion of her, his face, <laughs> I think it's a his for, for change, um, that that's the preferred ideal. He has both clearly defined strong looking eyebrows and uh, the preferred shape of the eyes. Um, so that's um, that's mating. All right, catch into the current safety by one more day with Sophie. See you next time.